Seven crews set out from northern Spain on a 31,000 nautical mile race around the globe in what is the roughest, toughest fully crewed challenge in ocean racing. It would be a journey of triumph and of tragedy. Truly life at the extreme. This is the story of the 2005 6 Volvo Ocean Race. The Volvo is still the battle against the harshest conditions on the planet it always was. But in the four years since the last event, the race has changed. In comes smaller crews, a new race format, and a brand new class of boat. The Volvo Open 70s are the fastest fleet of monohull racing yachts ever built. are not so much boats, say their skippers, as weapons. Faster, lighter and more powerful than the 60s they replace, the 70s can sail faster than the wind. The standout feature of the design is the canting keel, which can be moved from side to side to keep the boat more upright. This allows a bigger sail area to be carried for any given wind strength. It's the first time that this system has been used in a Volvo Ocean race, and combined with a massive sail area, it will permit enormous speeds. These boats are, you know, will do 20 plus knots, you know, the click of your fingers. They're overpowered, over canvassed, under crewed, and very light. So, you know, you've got to be pretty careful this time. Leg one of the race takes the fleet on a 6,400 mile arc from Vigo, northern Spain, to Cape Town. Leg two sees the boats tackle the icebergs and screaming winds of the Southern Ocean en route to Melbourne. Leg three takes the fleet to Wellington and a 48 hour stop before the second dive into frostbite territory on leg four, the rounding of Cape Horn and the dash to Rio de Janeiro. Next, the fleet heads for Baltimore and Annapolis before sailing further north for a 48-hour stop in New York at the end of Leg 6. Leg 7 sees a high-speed transatlantic run to Portsmouth, from where the fleet begins a lap of the British Isles on Leg 8, concluding in the Dutch port of Rotterdam. The race ends with the Leg 9 sprint into Gothenburg. <laughs> The only skipper to have won the race before is Paul Kayard, who leads Disney's entry, Pirates of the Caribbean. A winner eight years ago aboard EF Language, he faces stiff opposition from four well-backed and better-prepared campaigns. Kiwi Mike Sanderson leads the two-boat team ABN AMRO challenge. ABN AMRO 1 is his, the senior boat, while Frenchman Sebastien Joss skippers ABN AMRO 2, manned by a talented but less experienced younger crew. Denmark's Bauer Becking skippers Movistar, the Spanish entry, with more pre-race miles on the clock than anyone. As quick, potentially quicker, is Neil McDonald's Ericsson. Both skippers are race veterans but are leading their own campaigns from the beginning for the first time. Brazil 1 is the country's first Volvo entry and led by Torben Grail, the most successful Olympic sailor ever. It's dinghy sailors like Grail who are likely to benefit most from the race's new format. In addition to point scoring gates on the nine ocean going legs, there will be short course races for the first time at seven of the stopover ports in between. These races account for 20% of the overall points. Nice start, Tim. In the first, off Sanchenzo, Grail and navigator Adrian Kahalan, the race's only female sailor, have to settle for second place behind Ericsson. Paul Kayard's Pirates of the Caribbean rolls past Movistar to take third. At the back of the fleet, the two ABN AMRO boats. Mike Sanderson's in sixth spot and worryingly short of speed in the light air. 
the only boat with more problems than Sanderson seems to have is the seventh race entry, Premier Challenge. Delayed by lack of funds, the Australian boat misses the import race and looks like missing the start of the first leg as well. It's only when a new sponsor steps forward at the 11th hour that it can even hope to take part. But the boat is still failing to meet race regulations on several counts and drastic measures are called for. We've had an absolute shocker actually. We uh, got the new keel bulb and fin up to the aeroplane in Melbourne to fly it over here. We thought they were just going to be able to strap it down inside the plane, but they rejected it because they were worried about it moving inside the plane. So we've had to uh, get to with the planer and the chainsaw and uh, chop uh, a few hundred kilos off the keel, off the bulb that we had. The Australians work through the night to get their boat ready, and by morning they're able to take their place on the start line. Seven boats are now looking for the smallest advantage over their rivals. warning goes unheeded as the fleet is unleashed into the teeth of a North Atlantic storm. Movistar and Pirates of the Caribbean crash out with structural damage and keelbox problems. This is like a cannon shot that went off. We just had a little fire on board. Sanderson's ABN AMRO 1 sets a new 24-hour speed record. We were at a time where we just did 532 miles. You, you. And atones for last place in Sanchenzo by leading the fleet into Cape Town for a team 1-2. Rivals vanquished, boat vindicated. You know, we had our ups and downs. We had to tough it out for the import race, and we believed in the boat, you know, and uh, it's huge. on the first leg and fearful on the second the Volvo fleet runs into trouble again deck delamination on Brazil one keel ram failure on Neil McDonald's Ericsson um, certainly as it stands right now going into the sun nation would be ludicrous uh, you know what we came down for just put this boat aside for us. all good as the westerlies kick in, Avian Amro 2 kicks on, breaking Mike Sanderson's speed record in pursuit of the senior boat. 550 miles in a white boat! Yeah! <laughs> Keel problems return en route to Eclipse Island, forcing Movistar to bolt to Albany for running repairs. Pirates follow, but can't make the pieces fit. What was wrong? The drawing was wrong. Therefore, it does fit. Two days later, Brazil 1's mast collapses, leaving Torben Grail's men floundering towards Fremantle. It takes a five-day outback odyssey to get the boat to Melbourne. Back on the water, it's another triumph for Team ABN AMRO. Juan Kumajan's design looks invincible in moderate and heavy airs. The winning skipper's elated but exhausted. It's been the most intense three weeks of yachting in my life. boats start the leg three dash to Wellington after Grant Warrington's Brunel withdraws to relaunch its campaign in Baltimore. The trip across the Tasman Sea proves testing and tight. After four days racing, the leg produces the narrowest margin of victory in Volvo Ocean Race history. 
Star pips ABN AMRO one by just nine seconds. Forced to bring in its shore crew to repair the boat again in Wellington, the Spanish entry incurs a two-hour penalty on the leg four restart, but the work fails to last the distance. Ice gates keep the fleet clear of trouble on the return to the Southern Ocean, but the time-honored challenges remain. Southern Ocean, the turns were boys into men. Less than 200 miles from Cape Horn, Movistar starts taking on water rapidly through a damaged keelbox. The level reaches hip height before emergency pumps can be started to save the boat. Movistar's leg four challenge is over, and realistically, any chance of challenging ABN AMRO 1 in the race overall. Yes, she is the ball. After rounding Cape Horn, the fleet bunches up in light changing conditions that test the patience of the navigators to the limits. But even in the light, ABN AMRO 1 proves hard to reel in. And while the battle rages for second, third, and fourth, it's Mike Sanderson's men who are first into Rio. Four legs gone, it's the black boat that's dominating the race. 14 points clear they may be. But with lighter air legs ahead of them, Pirates of the Caribbean now fully up to speed, Movistar back on track, and a rejuvenated Ericsson in prospect, they're still a long way from home. Three weeks after arriving in Rio, the fleet returns to the racetrack for leg five to Baltimore. Winners of the Rio import race, Mike Sanderson's lead on ABN AMRO 1 seems unassailable but the battle still rages on the boats behind him. Just five and a half points separate second place from fourth. But the leg five restart takes place in light and unpredictable conditions, with the wind only coming up shortly before the gun. the fleet clears the bay, it's Pirates of the Caribbean who snatch an early lead. Well, Jug, another nice start. That's why they have the big Jesus Christ over uh, Guanabara Bay to, for things like that. When they need to start at 110, the wind comes in at 105. On the way to Baltimore, our Volvo fleet have the opportunity to pick up more points at the Fernando de Noronha scoring gate before they head north towards the USA. Just short of the scoring gate, ABN AMRO 1 make their move on the leg leader. Movistar are suddenly looking over their shoulder. As darkness falls on the approach to Fernando de Noronha, ABN AMRO 1 close in. He's just got another wave. Early in the morning there were like a little dot on the horizon and we just knew in these conditions we had like uh, reaching conditions 12 to 18 knots that they just go a little faster than us. So we knew we were in for a, for a tight one. No time for despondency on the Spanish entry, however, as reaching the Northern Hemisphere sees King Neptune appear to mark Fernando Echevarri's first crossing of the equator. Welcome on board. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. We've got one offender only this time. One offender, yes, I remember all of you many times. Are you? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> While ABN AMRO 1 and Movistar pull away from the rest of the Volvo fleet, a duel for third develops between Paul Kayard's Pirates of the Caribbean and Torben Grail's Brazil 1. Pirates of the Caribbean, in front of me, another thousand miles to the Caribbean. 
Uh, I'm Dutch. I think my Navy still has a standing order to sink anything that displaces Jolly Roger. It will let them get away with it. However, rule one of being a pirate, you need a fast sea than your prey. Not today. Day 16, Rio to Baltimore, and Abian Amro 1 makes its way up Chesapeake Bay towards the finish line. Over 4,950 miles behind it, less than 50 to go. Renowned for its capricious winds, tides, and sandbanks, the Chesapeake's challenges have so far been slow to materialize. The threat from Mobistar has also yet to appear, still some 30 miles behind. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge is the last major landmark en route to what looks like being their fourth leg win from five attempts. But with less than three miles to the finish, the black boat simply stops, trapped in light air and fighting a one-knot current. Sanderson's men resort to dropping anchor. Behind them, rivals Movistar are closing at 13 knots, raising the spectre of Abian Amro 1's defeat in Wellington at the hands of the Spanish entry at the end of leg three. By the time the breeze fills in again for Abian Amro 1, Movistar are less than 20 miles in arrears. It's a relieved Mike Sanderson that finally crosses the line 15 days, 2 hours and 47 minutes after leaving Rio. This is a childhood dream of mine since I was five years old. Everything I've done has been to try and uh, one day hope to skip a Volvo boat. So uh, never, the novelty never wears off. It's never less special. And um, yeah, this is another fantastic one after a very tough leg. So with their fourth leg win of the race, Avian Amro 1 now have a yawning 22-point lead. But below them, it's a different story. Just a point and a half separating Movistar in second from Pirates in fourth. In fifth place, it's Brazil one, Ericsson still struggling in sixth. Baltimore also sees the return to the race of Brunel. The Australian entry withdrew after the second leg due to financial constraints and must now start on zero points. So seven boats take to the water for the in-port race, where the light winds are expected to favour the narrower, far-designed entries. After a close battle with Ericsson, it's Movistar who pull off the move of the race to snatch the lead. And with overall leaders Abian Amro 1 struggling in these conditions, the Spanish entry holds on to record its second win of the race. Movistar hold on to second place overall, but by only two and a half points from Pirates of the Caribbean. For Mike Sanderson, the stopover in Baltimore brings a unique challenge. As skipper of ABN AMRO 1, mastering huge waves and plotting a course through dangerous seas is an everyday occurrence. Throwing the opening pitch at a Baltimore Orioles baseball game isn't. Yeah, I'm pretty nervous, to be fair to say. Fair to say, I'm pretty nervous. I'm more nervous about this than the start of the Volvo Ocean Race, put it that way. Okay, Mike, whenever you're ready, it's your pitch. I'm useless. <laughs> oh, better stick to the day job, Mike. Sorry, I don't know, after a week's training, that was just shocking. <laughs> Once again, we congratulate and thank you. Well, usually I always support my, my skipper, but tonight I take my jacket off. Not a good pitch. <laughs> it was a disaster. Terrible. Five, four, three, Race day, two, Annapolis. One, strike. The sixth leg will be a fast and furious charge out of the Chesapeake Bay and up the eastern seaboard to New York. Over 2,000 spectators line Bay Bridge as one by one the fleet set their spinnakers, bound for the exit of the Chesapeake Bay.
but strong headwinds of 40 knots are on the horizon. The next 400 miles are going to be tough. It's going to be a long and tough night having these boats this close together. I don't know. I don't know how anybody's going to sleep. The strong winds and heavy rain soon arrive. ABN AMRO 2 bear the brunt. Last into Baltimore, Seb Joss's crew are once again struggling as night approaches. Now we're pretty much uh, upwind all the way to Ambrose Light, so uh, it's going to be uh, more of this pounding upwind condition, which is not that pleasant. Creeping through the darkness into an expectant Manhattan, ABN AMRO 1, Mike Sanderson's boat arriving in New York to win leg six of the Volvo Ocean Race. Overall victory now almost within reach. While dawn breaks in New York and Sanderson's men leave the quayside in search of warm beds, drama begins to unfold on the water. Pirates of the Caribbean make a break for home ahead of the rest and claim second spot. So here's how the table looks as the dust settles in New York. Victory for ABN AMRO 1 sees them now lead the Volvo Ocean Race by 23 points. Another nine will secure overall victory. Only 13 points separate Pirates of the Caribbean in second and Ericsson in sixth. So all to play for as the boats prepare to cross the Atlantic, just 48 hours after their dramatic arrival under the New York skyline. After the short but punishing leg six from Annapolis, the Volvo fleet has just two days in which to rest and prepare the boats for the 3,200 mile transatlantic dash to Portsmouth on leg seven. With ten and a half points up for grabs, it's an important leg for all the boats, not least race leaders ABN AMRO 1, now just nine points away from winning the event outright. Out on the Hudson River, there's barely 10 knots of breeze and a strong ebbing tide. Not easy conditions in which to make the perfect start. Ten. Nine. Eight. Cover. Six. Five. Cooling their heels in North Cove Marina for another two hours, Movistar enduring their second enforced two-hour penalty of the race. Pirates convincingly win the start and lead the fleet out of the river. Brunel also looking confident and secure in second place. Sailing past the Statue of Liberty, the sight is nothing short of spectacular as the wind begins to freshen. Finally, for Movistar, their time is up and New York waves goodbye to the one remaining boat. Surging out of the harbour in encouraging conditions, Movistar's race has finally begun. It's time to play catch-up. On day eight for ABN AMRO 2, racing becomes an irrelevance. Sailing in 30 knots of wind in five metres seas some 1,300 miles from Land's End, England, Dutchman Hans Horowitz is washed overboard. Did he have a life jacket on? No life jacket, no harness. Thank you. All the people on the deck at the time, except for Hans, were clipped on. It changed very quickly and the wind was get, getting up quite quickly and, uh, and uh, we were in the process of, uh, of clipping on. A matter of 30 seconds or a minute, he would have been down there and put his harness on to come back on deck. Being the navigator, I was... Uh, person responsible for hitting the man overboard button and uh, just making sure we went back to, uh, to where we lost Hans over the side. 
We were only 1.6 miles away from Hans when we had the spinnaker down, the, uh, the staysail furled, a daggerboard down so we could go upwind and the boat was turned around and, uh, and heading back. First time we saw him, uh, we, we came probably, it was six meters, seven meters from the boat. Uh, tried it once, but the swell was too big, so I couldn't get him. Uh, then Sepp decided to do another, I think, two laps, and then uh, he came really close to the boat, and, and half hanging out of the boat, we could, uh, we could uh, grab him. As soon as we got Hans on, we initiated uh, just, you know, basic, basic uh, life support CPR, and that's really all you can do. We're really, really limited. You know, with the facilities and things that we have on board to, to try to save someone. Whatever boat you go into the sea, it's, it will be dangerous. I think it's a great boat, but we must always remember the sea is a dangerous place. Hans Horowitz was 32. He leaves a partner, Petra, and a young daughter. After the tragic events of Thursday morning, the race goes on. Our fleet continues to head for England through perilous seas. At the head of the fleet, Mike Sanderson's crew surged through the scoring gate off the Lizard, gaining maximum points. Now, just the finish line in Portsmouth awaits, and AB and AMRO 1 are not holding back. Overall victory is just hours away. Just 10 days after waving Manhattan goodbye, Abian Amro 1 tears across the finish line in Portsmouth to take leg seven of the Volvo Ocean Race, securing overall victory for Mike Sanderson's crew. Uh, it's such a special moment. This is my, my Olympic medal. This is my climbing of Mount Everest. This is my, my childhood dream to get to skipper a boat and win it in the Volvo Ocean Race. We had to go on to the finish. Um, that's what Hans would have wanted. Um, suddenly, I got this urge that we had to go on and win the leg, and by winning the leg, that meant we won the race. And um, you know, as a, as a good friend, Mikey Howard, um, sent me, who's you know, he sent me an e email to say, you know, we've we've lost a friend and we've gained an angel. And uh, you know, hopefully Hans is looking down and watching us, um, watching us come in here tonight because it was was pretty special and it's what he would have wanted. As AB and Amro One closed in on victory, drama begins to unfold some 400 miles short of Land's End. Movistar, riddled with problems since the race began, runs into difficulty. The keel pivot bearing breaks away from the hull, and water begins to pour into the boat. Fabian Amro 2, carrying the body of Hans Horowitz, alter their route and come to assist the stricken Movistar. A desperate crew attempt to stop the leak by securing the keel with ropes. With the boat taking on more water, Becking and his crew are left with no option but to abandon ship. Just three days after losing Hans Horowitz, AB and AMRO 2, the youngest crew in the race, find themselves saving the lives of ten others. 
much appreciation to you guys. After spending the night on ABN AMRO 2, the crew of Movistar prepared to climb on board a race support boat six miles south of Falmouth, Cornwall. ABN AMRO 2, meanwhile, heads towards a Royal Netherlands Navy frigate, which will take off the body of Dutch crewman Hans Horowitz. Following the drama of the seventh leg, the race jury met and granted redress to all the boats that had altered course to help ABN AMRO 2 and Movistar. The Spanish entry's demise leaves Pirates of the Caribbean with a firm hold on second place, but they could still be caught by Brazil 1, who are now in third. Ericsson's second place on the leg has moved them back in contention for a podium finish. After a week in Portsmouth, the fleet must put the sorrow of leg 7 behind them as it prepares for the Portsmouth in-port race. Watching the action out on the Solent international yachtsman Chris Law. The Portsmouth import race to the Volvo Ocean race. The scene is set. There's plenty of breeze. Man against the elements once again. Kenny Reid shouting at his competitors. This is the home port of the British Navy, steeped in history here. Plenty of round the world races have finished. And with the tragedies of the previous leg behind us, life moves on and the world turns. The six remaining boats in the race jostle for position. Tense moments these, here comes the gun, stand by. Go, go! Great start, there's the gun, look at that. All boats really tightly bunched at the weather end. ABN AMRO 1, slightly late sheeting on. ABN AMRO 2 to windward. Brunel got a flyer. Brazil 1's clear too. Pirates at the leeward end, driving hard. They want the left upwind, I'm sure of that. Jules Salter, the navigator. Born and bred in the Isle of Wight, and oh no, Brunel have broken down. Daggerboard trouble, I think. Good shot of the fleet. Here comes Kayard coming in from the left. Sheets are eased here. He must be over the ley line. Full chat at the top mark. He's going to lead round the top mark safely. There's the windward mark. They tack around it. This is going to be a tack set, so the boat is tacking through the Isle of the Wind and standby spinnaker set. Paul Kayard on the lead. Can he finally win a leg? Followed by ABN AMRO 1. Pressure beyond downwind here. Their bear away setting spinnaker going up. Daggerboard's already up in the air. Brazil 1 in third. Look at the power as they bear off around the top mark. Cantilevering keel almost out of the water. Mainsail a bit late going out, full heel angle here, full chat, daggerboards up. They're in for a rough ride. Working hard to get the shoot up. I know, oh, Ericsson has split their spinnaker on the hoist. Must have caught on a stanchion. Straight to spike it loose, right? Kenny Reid making the call to let it go. No point trying to recover that, that's no good to him. The whole thing is going to be let go. Yowza, this is what it's all about. Jerry Kirby on the bow. Paul Kayard now going in for the turn, jiving, fighting the wheel. He's going to lose control. The boat's going to spin out here just like a Formula One car. Spin out. Broach. Shredded spinnaker. More disasters. Memories going back to Cape Town. Pirates seem to have trouble jiving, getting their keel across in time. Meanwhile, ABN AMRO 1, the series leader, are going to take the lead. They show no mercy and go straight through to Lewis. And there's a passenger aboard ABN AMRO 2. Does that mean something? ABN AMRO 1 nearly losing it.
Pirates in second, pushing hard. So ABN AMRO 1 comes to the finish for another win. Dominant inshore as well as offshore. Their boat handling is superb. Throughout the race, they've just got better and better. At the top of the leaderboard, ABN AMRO 1 are now just a dot on the horizon. The race sewn up with two legs to spare. Paul Kayart, second place on the Solent, cements the Pirates' second spot overall. Brazil 1 now seven and a half points behind them. Movistar's plight sees ABN AMRO 2 move up to fourth place, still within range of a resurgent Ericsson. So ends an extraordinary few days for Mike Sanderson. His wedding, his birthday, and victory in Portsmouth. Leg eight of the Volvo Ocean Race will see our fleet head out from Portsmouth along what's widely recognized as one of the most famous stretches of water in the world of yachting the Solent. The boats will then head along the south coast of England, around Ireland, up to the very north of the UK, and then back through the North Sea before eventually reaching the finish line in Rotterdam, Holland. Leg eight of the Volvo Ocean Race gets underway in Portsmouth. Next stop, Rotterdam. The breeze is up for the moment, but light winds are forecast for the next few days. This journey around the UK promises to be a real test. As feared, within 15 minutes of the gun, the wind dies. The excellent starts made by both AB and AMRO crews count for nothing. It's hard going, but within 45 minutes, the breeze picks up again as the boats edge their way down the Solent. Two and a half hours after leaving Portsmouth, with the sun setting on the Solent, the leading boats reach the Needles and begin to head out into open waters. The race is on. Here we are in the notorious English Channel. Still very light airs, um, managed to wriggle our way through the night in not too bad a shape, which was quite uh, nice. So, um, yeah, any time that we can uh, get away with managing to stay with the pack when it's this light is a big bonus. Um, basically got the whole fleet around us, um, Pirates and AB and AMRO 2 to Leward, Brazil, Brunel and Ericsson right here to windward, so um, all very tight. We're about to be rolled by the Brazilians. They're doing about a knot faster than us. It happens. Oh my God, it's the pirates. Look out. <laughs> Volvo drift off. Can I invite them over for coffee? That's all right, mate. I'm sure we can find something to build a fire in the galley. <laughs> the delays in getting around the UK bring an obvious problem. Food situation in the ABN2 is going critical. Tell us about it. Well, Seb just peeked his head out the cabin this morning and said that we actually have um, probably 10 days of yachting. We've only. Um, uh, packed for six days of food, so um, we've uh, slowly been uh, ra rationing some of the meals and everything, but um, I think we're going to be okay. We, c we can live with a couple of days without food. Some of us are a um, little overweight from the last few stopovers, but um, yeah, um, just slowly putting some of the packages of food away till, um, so we can have a couple left for the next few days. The last five days of sailing have seen an average of just six knots of breeze. The first group of three boats has only just cleared the northeast tip of Scotland, 
450 miles still to run, even with the now shortened route. Suffering along with everybody else, AB and AMRO won. Had a pretty tough day here watching Ericsson and Brazil won, which you can see over my right shoulder. Um, come in on us a lot in their lighter airs. The breeze has just built back a little bit, maybe up to seven knots, and now uh, we're reaching on close to our course. So hopefully we can hang on a little bit better. Ericsson also craved their first leg win and share the lead with AB and AMRO won and Brazil won as the first group makes for Rotterdam in a freshening breeze. Now a hundred miles behind them, the second group are still suffering. Fourth place pirates rationing their four remaining meals to one every hundred miles. Finally, after more than seven days of racing, two more than expected, a delighted Torben Grail and crew emerge from the darkness to claim a popular victory. The winning margin over AB and AMRO won just three minutes and ten seconds. <laughs> it's a wonderful achievement to win a leg. Very demanding on the concentration, on the light ears, to, to get every little puff to, to stay in front. So I think the uh, uh, crew did a wonderful job and uh, everybody's quite happy. By the early afternoon of Saturday, day nine, the Dutch Spectator fleet is out in force to welcome Leg 8's last three finishers. First in, Paul Kayard's Pirates of the Caribbean. Fourth place leaves them just four and a half points clear of Brazil 1 in the battle for second overall. Yeah, it is the first time in several months that we're not on the podium. But, you know, that's how racing is, that's how competition is. You can't win all the time and... Uh... So we're still in a very strong position and uh, we got a couple more legs to go. And so to Sunday and the final in port race. And Kayard knows that he can't afford to let Brazil 1 get away. Abian Amro 1 takes an early lead and the Pirates decide to play a tactical game. Leading the Brazilians away from the battle for the lead. So Mike Sanderson's men are free to take their fifth in port victory of the campaign. So at the top of the leaderboard, race winners AB and AMRO 1 increase their lead, now 28 points clear. The podium places are still not confirmed. The Pirates lead over third place Brazil 1, now down half a point to just four. The final leg of the Volvo Ocean Race gets underway in Rotterdam. The beginning of the last episode of an extraordinary adventure. The fleet soon splits with ABN AMRO 2 gambling on an easterly route, putting them at the front of the fleet. Spotting this, Brazil, Brunel and Pirates of the Caribbean all make a dive for the easterly course. By morning, it's Paul Kayard's Pirates of the Caribbean who emerge ahead as the finish line draws near. win. Seven points on the scoreboard and more importantly second place overall. AB and AMRO 2 put an end to their string of last places, second in leg nine and securing fourth place overall. That's, that couldn't have been written any better in Hollywood. I love the race, this is what I do, it's what I enjoy doing, so uh, I'm very happy, I can't complain. Brazil won, picked their way through the armada of spectator boats. Torben Grail's crew finishing third on leg nine and third place overall. 
just missing out on a podium finish, but still enjoying their best result in this race, Brunel. And fifth place goes to Neil McDonald's Ericsson. Although they're still out on the water, it's Mike Sanderson's crew on ABN AMRO 1 who win the race by 23 points from Pirates of the Caribbean. Brazil 1 finished third, ahead of ABN AMRO 2, Ericsson, Movistar and Brunel. Overall winner ABN AMRO 1 eases its way into Gothenburg. Mike Sanderson's crew has dominated this epic race in spectacular fashion. The Fighting Finish Trophy is rightfully theirs. This race promised seven months and 33 and a half thousand miles of life at the extreme, and it duly delivered. <laughs>